363 days ago, we sat down the brew over the topic that is mad science, everyone. Outside of the usual events associated with it, mind. And while the timing of this experiment showcase wasn't planned, it's obvious the potions of the constant need to be brought front and center once again. Well, one of them at least. As it's really the only one that truly matters at the end of the day. Folks, the lunar experiment can single-handedly alter our entire gameplay sessions and can do it with ease. So let's mutate. After we also turn on what needs to be on, of course. Now, I'm a proponent of just turning on all of these for the most part, but today is all about Hollowed Knights here. So do so, check out your Prototypers and Stations tab, and the always available Mad Scientist Lab will be yours to craft. But if you want to know what the other five experiments do, you will have to head elsewhere, as what we need to focus on are Moon Moths and the Loon Tree Blossoms, two Lunar Island materials that actually both drop in high numbers from the very same single source, Loon Tree. Factor in the chances to get multiple lunar experiments per craft, and amassing these potions for everything that is about to come is shockingly simple. 50% of the time, we'll get one potion. 30% of the time, a craft will result in two. And 20% of the time, we can walk away with three potions per one craft. It's good stuff. But trust me, the better bits are yet to come. For you see, lunar experiments can mutate over a dozen mobs and resources into their lunar counterparts which leads to scenarios like turning a bunch of butterflies into both moon moth wings and additional loon trees. Yes, indeed. Not only can this transformation work to make more potions down the line, of course, moon moth wings themselves are actually kind of insane when it comes to the stat restorations. So enjoy and use them well. But in the event you wish to keep your normal butterflies for whatever reason, an alternative option is to simply turn flowers into loon trees instead. But before before we move on, we should also probably mention why loon trees are so darn good for those who don't know what I'm going on about in these last two segments. They will drop the most logs out of every tree in the entire game, and as mentioned before, lead to both moon moths themselves and the loon tree blossoms. So having them off the lunar island is going to be greatly beneficial. To continue, plain old light bulbs can be mutated into the very versatile bulbous light bugs here for literal infinite light on the go and for our homes. There will be no need to head to the Lunar Grotto with multiple bug nets anymore, and basic light bulbs are way more numerous to begin with, so there you go. All that said though, normal light flowers found anywhere in the caves can also be made to now drop bulbous light bugs, so if you do this just near any entrance, you'll be able to reap the same rewards that way as well. There are plenty of options here. And that's the point. Well, what about a new optional use that some out there may not even know got added mere months ago? bird mutations. Any and all birds can now become either a misshapen one or a moon blind crow here without having to progress all the way to the end game to Wagstaff's moon storms. And caging them is going to lead to rot and rotten eggs galore. Veggies will lead to the former, with meat resulting in the latter. And while rot is good by its lonesome for sure, such amounts of rotten eggs can also be really helpful in creating mounds upon mounds of gunpowder with ease. Make notes. But now we enter the few situations where there's plenty to admire, sure, but we have to work for it all a bit more. Like turning carrots here into carrots. It's interesting and can help you if you've also got the year of the carrot on itself, but the real prize for me might be the leafy meats. Carrots drop a piece guaranteed, so they must die to obtain it, but leafy meat recipes are arguably the best overall in this game, so if you can kind of work through this progression, you might be good. Talking about hounds here also leads to a somewhat similar discussion, although it's obviously way more dangerous. They can be transformed into their horror hound selves even without dying first and horror hounds drop a two hound teeth guaranteed while regular guys have a mere 12.5 percent chance to drop even one so do you see where these final mutations are going folks they are unique and can indeed be meaningful however i will do them as a last resort myself if i had a choice tank turning dragon fruit into ripe salad manders here which will eventually unripen meaning they will not only drop even more 
more leafy meat, but could actually just be used for whey protection. Seriously, these little guys continue to boast 900 health for some reason, and can even deal upwards of 50 damage a bite. But you do you. But to truly wrap up our day comes the ones where I will always question why anyone is doing such things, like messing with lobsters, for example. Lobsters lead to some incredibly fancy and fruitful crockpot dishes themselves, while also just being good substitutes for any fish dish, while lunar lobsters only lead to moon glass, one of the most plentiful resources ever, and cannot be used for food purposes at all. So yeah, no. Saplings follow suit, and can be transformed into the far better looking lunar saplings here, but this literally means nothing beyond that, unfortunately. Each and every spider type in the entire game can be turned into shattered spiders, which also means absolutely nothing, as each and every spider type has the exact same loot chances. And finally, while moon rock pangles are terrifyingly awesome, there is no reason to turn a neutral mob hostile for just monster meat and a chunk of ice 25 and 50% of the time, respectively. So nope, 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 and nope. So with four final strikes, it might sound like the lunar experiment is out. But come on now, everyone. At least two of the other mutations seen here today make up for the shortcomings without question. There is no doubt in my mind that these things can literally change our entire gameplay scenarios by themselves, which is why I had to dedicate an entirely separate guide to them after all this time. I hope it was convincing. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish to all, moon minions for the win, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.